to give him the praise Amen. and the glory and the honor that is due to him. And when we think about what he has done for us, the, the great sacrifice that he has made, he is king of kings and lords of lords. He is above all principalities and powers. And yet, he came down to earth, humble to born in a manger for us. He had no sin. He was sinless. Jesus was the only man who ever walked on the face of the earth that, wasn't, well, that, was, that had not committed sin. All have sinned. The, the word of God says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So we are all sinners. But because of the grace and the mercies of God, we can say, I am saved. I am a sinner saved by grace. Hallelujah. We are saved by the blood of Jesus. What sacrifice he made for us. And how can we not praise him? How, shall, how, how can we not worship him? How can we not give him the glory and the honor that is due for his, to his name? Amen. So we want to give him thanks and praise and glorify him for all that he has done. Before we go any further, I'm going to ask anyone who may have a testimony or have a prior request to state to have a to say your testimony if you have a prior request because you know we're living in a time now that prior is the key it doesn't matter what you have it doesn't matter what you have acclaimed what you have um, what you have accomplished in this life it doesn't matter whether it's wealth or fame or whatever it is, that does not matter. What matters is a connection with God. That's what we need, a connection with God. Nothing, I mean the wealth, the fame, and whatever it is that we achieve academic-wise, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take us anywhere. We need, we need a connection with God. And this is why we need the Spirit of God when we, when we have accepted God. We need to draw near to God. We need to drink from the fount. Hallelujah. And give Him the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Sister Clark in a little while to read um, the scripture. And I'm going to ask Pastor Walters um, to give us a prayer afterwards. And then we'll go into the words. Hallelujah. Is there a testimony? Is there a prayer request? Hallelujah. You may have your prayer request or your testimony now if you have one. Praise God, praise God. Praise the Lord. Father, be the glorious church. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Greetings, man. Thanking God for his goodness and his mercy. Sorry I'm not able to be in his house. But I'm thanking him because he knows, he cares, and he understands. Yeah. Amen. And I'm so glad that I've got a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that my faith is rooted, hallelujah, Amen. and in him. Because he, yesterday I was feeling too bright. And I cried out to him. I cried out to him with a loud voice. Just like how bad Simeon cried out to him for his sight. Amen. I cried out to Jesus to help me. And today I'm thanking God that He has granted me my heart desire. I'm thanking Him because of His grace and His mercy. Because He lives, I can live to see another day. Amen. Because He lives, I can praise Him. Because He lives, I can live also and take it one day at a time. Brethren, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm just giving him thanks and praise for all that he has done for me. It will take me much time to say what he has done for me. But I know he has done great things for me. We are off. I am glad. I'm glad the day when he saves me. And he not just only saves me and leaves me, but he's keeping me. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm so glad. That he's the refuge of my soul. Hallelujah. I can call on him at any time. His line is never too busy for me. He will always answer to my faintest cry. And I just want to thank him 
and bless you all, brethren, for your prayers. Because, you know, once you don't see Sister Clark in, in, in service, you know something is wrong. Amen. I just give God thanks and praise for His goodness and His mercy. Sometimes we are put through a text, and so we have to ask Him to help us and to help us to go through. And so today I'm glad that He hears and He answers prayer. And I'm asking you, brethren, to continue to pray for us, my family, those in Jamaica, and those that are here preparing to go to Jamaica whenever possible we can. So I just lift up the name of Jesus and high, because the name of Jesus is worthy to be lifted up. And I haven't got tongue enough to tell him. He knows my heart. He knows my desire. And I just want to give him thanks and praise. And he knows how sincere I am to him. And I'm just holding on, keeping on, trusting and believing in him. Comes what may, I will not allow anything to deter me from serving the Lord as he requires of me. Virgin, the Lord bless you all. I pray for you as you pray for me in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. God bless you, my dear sister. We overcome by our testimony. The Bible says they overcome by their testimony. Thank God for your testimony, my sister. It shows that God is still in the saving business. God is still in the business of delivering people. He is the same. The song that says he's just the same today. As he walked in Galilee, set the suffering captive free, he is just the same today. Hallelujah. God has not changed. Hallelujah. Amen. God said, I am the Lord, I change not. Even there from the days of your fathers. Hallelujah. He are not consumed because he's a merciful God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Lift yeah. Jesus higher from the earth. Hallelujah. Lift him up higher. We need us to lift up Jesus because he's so good. Hallelujah. He's so wonderful. Hallelujah. He's so blessed. We are so blessed. We, when we are called by Jesus, it's a blessing. It's a wonderful blessing. So uh, I just want to give God thanks for all of you, my brethren, holding on, holding fast uh, to God's unchanging arm, knowing that our Lord Amen. is still in the saving business. He's still there. Yes. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is a powerful name. Hallelujah. The word tells us that there's no greater word name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So there's power in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Um, unfortunately, we had lost one of our sisters, I think Sister, um, Sister Elizabeth um, from Barris Grove. Um, she passed away, but, you know, God knows best and God has taken her to a higher service. You know, so we have to, you know, the Lord give it, the Lord take it away. And so blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But as to go into the word, as the word tells us, in Luke chapter 19, it says, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Hallelujah. Now we know the story about Jericho when the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt and was going to Jericho. And we know the story very well of how Rahab the, the harlot hired the two spies that were sent to spy out Jericho. Hallelujah. And she asked the men that when they said Jericho feared when they heard that the children of Israel were coming towards them. They feared. And it was told the king that there's two spies that came into the house of Rahab the harlot. And he and the harlot and Rahab hide those two spies. And ask the spies to promise them when they come to take Jericho that they will spear her and her family. And it was so. So this was the great Jericho when the children marched around the walls as they called to Joshua and gave a shout and the walls fell down. Praise the Lord. So now the Lord Jesus is going through the city of Jericho. 
Praise the Lord. And as he go into the city, the Bible says, Behold, there was a man. There was a man. And his name was Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus was not just an ordinary man, but it says he was the chief among the publicans. So we know what the publicans are. The publicans are chiefly what it were, they were Jews who were collecting um, uh, the taxes for the Romans. And the publicans were hated because they were like traitors, because the Jews hated the Romans because the Romans was very harsh to them as rulers and they governed the land. So the, 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 the publican were not accounted as, as normal Jews. They were not liked, they were not loved. And so Zacchaeus was a chief, it says, among the publican. That means the other publicans who were collecting taxes would bring all their taxes to Zacchaeus because he was the chief. And the Bible says he was very rich. He was rich. Amen. He was a publican and he was rich. But there's something in him. The Bible says, he sought to see Jesus. Amen. He sought to see Jesus who he was. I imagine that he was curious. He was a rich man. And you, you imagine that a rich man is quite independent. But he, he was in need of something. In this world, riches is not satisfactory. It's not everything. It doesn't, it doesn't cover all our needs. We need something more than wealth. We need something more than riches to keep us. You know, if you're really sick, if you even think about this man who, owned, who was there, whatever of Apple, Steve Jobs as he was, so very rich, but his riches could not save him. He died of this chronic disease. So riches is not everything. And I think Zacchaeus might have saw in himself that there's something else that he needed. And so he heard to that Jesus was passing by. He sought to see Jesus, as the Bible says. He sought to see Jesus, who he was. You know, this man, all this crowd are following him. Who is this man? He was curious. Sometimes curiosity, they say curiosity kills the cat, but sometimes it also saves the cat. Amen. And he was so curious that he said he had to see Jesus, but he could not. For there was people around him, and, he, and the Bible says he was little of statue. So he, he couldn't in ordinary sense see him because he would not be seen because he was below the height of other men. But he needed to see Jesus. And you know something? Jesus wants us to have that thing, that desire. And this is why I said, well, this is why I'm saying we we'll seek him earnestly. Earnestly. Zacchaeus needed to see Jesus. It doesn't matter about the crowd. He needed to see Jesus. He had to find a way. And it was it was in a state of desperation because he was passing by, I had to see him. So the Bible says because he was of small stature. Sometimes I myself was a small statue at one time. I couldn't see Jesus. Amen. But I wanted to see Jesus. So I had to do something to see Jesus. Amen. And everybody who wants to see Jesus have to do something to see him. Amen. Amen. But so he, the Bible says he ran. You know, he ran and climbed. Because when, when somebody starts to run to do something, it means it's a sign of desperation. And Zacchaeus, though he was rich, he was desperate for something more than riches. And he knew that there's something in Jesus which is even more than riches. So he ran and he climbed up on that sycamore tree to see who, to see him, for he was to pass that way. Amen. Brethren, sometimes we have to reach out and touch the Lord. 
You just can't just sit back and lay back. We have to reach out. Imagine that woman who had the issue of blood. Imagine how she had to reach out to touch Jesus. Amen. Jesus is passing this way. Reach out and touch him now. Amen. All we need to do is stretch out and touch him. He's passing. If wherever you are, no, Jesus is passing. Just reach out and touch him. Amen. So Zacchaeus climbed up on the sycamore tree. Because he had to see Jesus. It was imperative that he see Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. He didn't want Jesus to pass and him not seeing Jesus. So he climbed up on the tree to see Jesus. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up. Amen. Oh, glory. He looked up. Now he knew that Zacchaeus wanted to see him. Yes. He knew it because he knew the heart of Zacchaeus. He knew Zacchaeus even before he was formed in the womb because he's God. And he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Amen. For today I must abide in thy house. Make haste. The king's business desire haste. You went up fast, come down fast. Amen. And come down. You know, it tells me that each one of us who are God's children, it doesn't matter if there is a thousand people or 10,000 people in a crowd, the eyes of God is upon you. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how many people is around, the eyes of God is upon you. As you are a child of God, the eyes of God is upon you. Everyone of God, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. So the eyes of God is upon us. And his eyes, of, his eyes was upon Zacchaeus, even though there was such a crowd, it may be thousands, throng around Jesus. But Jesus saw Zacchaeus and said, Make haste, come down, for today I must abide in thy house. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't Jesus wonderful? Because God know the heart and God knew what was in the heart of Zacchaeus even though he was rich. But there was something he did not let his rich deter him from, from seeking the Lord, from finding the Lord. His, his riches was not the thing. He wanted something that only Jesus could give him. And he says, Zacchaeus, make haste. Sometimes we are up on a height. And I didn't talk about coming up on a height like Paul, like Saul who became Paul. He was up on a height when he was persecuting the church. He was up on a height. He was on his high horse. Sometimes we find ourselves on a high horse. And God had to knock him off that horse knock him down and blind him too lose his sight and then he come to realize I am not so mighty as I think I was I'm not so good as I think I was I need something more and the only way we get something more is when we see Jesus and God knock him off his horse Come down off your horse and go into the street of straight. Hallelujah. I command Ananias to pray for thee that ye may receive your sight. Sometimes we're up, we need to come down. Come down. Come down, Zacchaeus, for today I must abide in your house. We have to come down when we want Jesus to come in. We come down and he come in. Amen. He must abide in in your house in thy house and the bible says he made haste and come down and receive him joyfully 
Amen. When you hear the, well, the song, it says, I heard the voice of Jesus says, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. Zacchaeus heard the voice of Jesus says, come unto me and rest. Even though you are rich, even though you are high, you're the publican, you're, faith, you're all this, but you need rest. And only I can give you rest because Jesus is the water of life. He is the light of this world. He's the bread of life. Hallelujah. Make haste and come down for today I will abide in thine house. God is saying that to every one of his children. Make haste. Come down. I want to abide in your house right now. Amen. This day, today, right now, I want to abide in your house. Make haste. Come down. Zacchaeus, come down. Make haste. I must, I must, I must abide in thy house today. And he made haste, the Bible says, and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured, saying that he has gone to be a guest of a man that is a sinner. Amen. But she realized that Jesus came for such. He came to save those that were lost. They did not understand the power of God. They did not understand the mercy of God. They did not understand the grace of God. The grace of God that Jesus came to bestow upon man. The grace that give us access. Access to the holy place. Because in the old days, it was only the high priest who could go in the holies of holies. But when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says the veil of the temple was rent in twain. There was no longer need for the high priest to go in and talk to God. Brethren, we can talk to God. Brethren, we don't need high priest to talk to God. We are, can enter the holies of holies and talk to God. How wonderful. He said he was gone to be a guest of a man that is a sinner because publicans are sinners. Publicans were regarded as sinners, and sinners was republic, and sinners was and publican was all in the same basket. Because the publican was supposed to be like a betrayer to the Jews, and the sinner was against well, sin against God was you know outside of the righteousness of God. So they complained, they said he's going to be a house, into the house a man who is a sinner. So imagine, immediately he's a publican, he's a sinner. And he was regarded as a sinner. But Jesus, the Bible says he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Even as Paul, Paul who persecuted the church, God could see in his heart that he had a love for him. But he did not understand. He was still living in the old uh, Mosaic law where Jesus came to fulfill. Jesus came to fulfill the law and to bring us grace because the law was our schoolmaster. But now he has brought us grace. The grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny worldly lust and live godly in this present world. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it great? And Zacchaeus stood. Now look at this. Zacchaeus stood and said unto him, Lord, behold, Lord, half of my goods will I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Hallelujah. 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 Now, that is what you would call a true repented heart. Yes, amen. That is what you call a true 
repented heart. Hear what Zacchaeus says. Lord, he said, half of my goods I'm prepared to depart to give away half of my wealth. And also if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore it fourfold. I think Zacchaeus truly repented. And there was something inside of him that say that he's a child of God. Sometimes people say, I repent. But the, the, the repentance is just a lip service. Um, I, I know you know of this television evangelist um, called um, Benny Hinn. Recently, uh, some, last year sometime, he came out and said that the Lord told him that he should not be collecting money for prayer, for praying for people of all and, and asking for money. He said that. He, he would stop doing that. Zacchaeus said he would, he would do what is right, but he said he would give back half his wealth to the, to the poor. The Benny Hinn never said that. He said he would stop, but he didn't say he would give back anything to the poor. So when we talk about true repentance, true repentance, Zacchaeus had truly repent. Now there was this rich man who came to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 19 verse 16 it says, And behold there came unto him, one unto him, saying, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Good master. And, and he said unto him, Why callest me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Amen. And if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, which Jesus said, Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not be a false witness, honor your father and your mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth. Up, oh, what luck I? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And the young man heard this saying, he went away sorrowful. Sorrowful. He had great possession. He went away sorrowful. Some people just cannot give up. Cannot give up. And Jesus, even though he obeyed all the commandments, he hasn't committed any crime, as the world would put it. He, he, he didn't have a criminal record, put it that way. He didn't have a criminal record. He was good. He was good. But there was something missing. For us to serve God, we need to give up. We need to come down. We need to come to the level that Jesus can deal with us. He can't deal with us when we're up on the tree. He can't, he can't communicate with us when we are up on our high horse, when we are sitting up on our wealth. If thou be perfect, sell what thou hast. Now, if you notice the difference with this, this, this man and, Laz, and Zacchaeus, Jesus never had to tell him to give up what he had. He openly said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor and if I taken anything from any man by false accusation I will restore fourfold. Can we see the difference with these, 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 these men? 
that one will serve the Lord and one will not serve the Lord. And Jesus said, continuing Matthew um, 19, verse 22, the young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had a great possession. And Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I said unto you, it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard this, they were exceedingly amazed and saying, who can save us? Oh, sometimes it seems so impossible, my brethren. For man, it seems so impossible. When we look at the condition, even as Christians, when we look at what's surrounding us, the temptation, what's going on around us, and even the present time when we see this COVID-19 and this, uh, this what is going on in, in, in our country, what is going on in the world, the confusion, people are dying, people, all sorts of things are happening. Church are closing. You know, it seems like the enemy is fighting with all he has because the Bible says his time is short. But this rich man, he could not give up. We have to give up. Every man has to give up. What applies to one applies to all because our God is not a respecter of person. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So Nicodemus, I mean Zacchaeus, realized that God, he needed something from the Lord. He needed something and only God could give it to him. So he was prepared to give up all. Give up all to follow Jesus. Amen. The one writer says, Take the world, but give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is all the world to me. Amen. Amen. And um, further on, going on, Jesus spoke a parable. Um, he said in Luke 19, going on, he says, A nobleman, a, a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive himself a kingdom and return. And he called his servant and delivered them 10 pounds and said, Occupy till I come. But this citizen hated him. But his citizen hated him. And sent messages saying, We will not this man rule over us. And it came to pass when he returned, having received the kingdom, commanded the servants to be called, of whom he gave money, that they may know, that he may know how much every man gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy ten pounds I've gained thee another ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a little, thou art authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Thy ten pounds has gained thee, thy five pounds has gave me five pounds. And he said likewise unto him, Be thou rule over five cities. Another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which, thou has, which I have kept in a napkin. For I fear thee, for thou art not steered man that taketh up what thou layest not down, and weepeth what thou sowest not. You see, sometimes people don't have good intention at all. You try to help them, and they do not the thing that you are gaining when you are trying to help them. And so it is with the good man, the Lord. He's trying to help us all. But we do not ex accept what he's trying to do. So the ten, the one that got the ten pounds came back with ten more. And the, 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 the moral of this, my brethren, is that Every one of us, God has given a gift. A gift. Every one of God's people was given a gift. 
and we have a gift and we must know what our gift is and we must know how to use it. Because the, the time come when God is going to call every man and say, what is this gift? I don't know what your gift is. I don't know. Everybody has their gift. But God wants us to use whatever he gives us. And today we heard that Jesus said, when he healed the blind man, he says, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. Because the night cometh when no man work. It's not going to be this way all the time, brethren. It's not going to be this way all the time. There is a change coming. Jesus is coming back again. He is coming back and is going to take and every man has to give an account of what we have done with the gift. And don't say God has not given you a gift. If he even gives you a one pound. So you did not get 10 pounds, you get one pound. But don't take your one pound and hide it in a nappy, in a napkin, sorry. Don't hide it. Take your one pound and make it into two. That when the good Lord comes and says, Lord, it's one pound you give me. I have traded it. I've invested in it. And I have two pounds. But don't sit on it, brethren. Let us not sit on what God gives us. The night is coming for sure. And no man work. So we have to work while it is day. So he says, it came to pass that he returned and received. Uh, and he said, to whom? He said, he has given the money that they might be gained. Okay, so I said further on. The, 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 this man who had the one pound, he said, I fear thee because thou art a steel man. And so he's a hard man. He gave you something to invest, but he's hard. Thou takest up what thou layest not down, and weepest what thou sowest. Out and Jesus and the Lord, the good man. This is a parable. So saying that the good man says, Out of your mouth will I judge thee, for thou wicked servant. No, that I was an astia man, take, up, take it up what I lay not down, reap it what I sow it not. Wherefore? So therefore, why didn't you give my money out to the bank that I may receive interest? Because, you know what? Your heart is not good before the Lord. Your heart is not right. And this is why the good man said, you are a wicked servant. Because you have not done nothing with the gift I've gave you. Maybe some other people would be glad to have the gift that you have, that we have. And you not using it, you put it down. Amen. Wherefore, then, givest not thou my money to usury, to the bank, that I may require of my own usury. And he said unto them that stood by, take the one pound and give it to the one that has the ten. And they said unto him, Lord, but he has ten. For I say unto you, to every one which shall be given. And from that which he had not. And he that has shall be taken away, even though he has not. But those things, those my enemies, that would not have me rule over them, bring them before me and slay them. Brethren, time is short. The end is upon us. Whether we, uh, well, we, we know it's upon us. The time, is, the, the time is telling us. It's on upon us. Jesus is coming back and he's coming back soon. He is coming back. And we need to prepare ourselves for his coming. The Bible says the Lord himself shall descend descend from heaven with a shout with the trump and the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise those in the sea down on the ground anywhere they are they got the dead in Christ shall rise so those who are gone before they shall come up out of the earth to meet the Lord in the air 
and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. A great day is coming, brethren. A great day is coming. One songwriter says, shout it on the mountain top, proclaim it in the busy street, tell it everywhere you go, tell everyone you meet, Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Let the whole world know that Jesus is coming. Never mind COVID-19. Never mind COVID-19. Think about the coming of the Lord. Peter says in first, Second Peter chapter 3, knowing this first, that there shall come, that shall come in the last days, scoffers. Scoffers. Walking after their own lust. Saying, where is the promise of his coming? You know, since our father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But you know what, what is hitting me now? Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, For they, for this, they willingly are ignorant of. And I, I wonder, I said to myself, how can somebody be willingly ignorant? How can anyone be willingly ignorant? Oh, I, I want to be ignorant. I want to be foolish. I want to ignore the signs. I want to ignore the word. I want to ignore the fact that Jesus says he's coming back again. I want to ignore the fact that there's going to be a change. That this world will not always remain this way. I want to ignore, I want to be ignorant. The Bible says, Paul, Peter says, for this they willingly are ignorant. What excuse has anyone has to be willingly ignorant? When you say Jesus is coming soon, they look at you. Uh, uh, uh. But he's coming back. Peter went, Peter went on to say that by the word of God was the heavens of all and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was so was being overflowed with water perish so there was a world that was then so this is not the first world there was a world then but the world was flooded with water according to the word of God. According to what he said to Noah. Build me an ark. Amen. Hallelujah. Ashakuma. Hello, Messiah. Hallelujah. Build me an ark, he said to Noah. Build me an ark. For I shall cause rain to fall upon this earth. And Noah built that ark. And 120 years he was building the ark and saying to them, same thing we are saying today, he said the word, repent. Same word Noah used, we are using today, repent. 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 And they walked, and there were scoffers. They were saying, this man it's crazy. He's building an ark to sail on dry land. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. But the time came when God shut that door when everybody and even the ants and the flies, the mosquitoes and whatever was there on the earth all crawl into the ark. Hallelujah. All of God's creation call into the ark. And the Bible says, the time come, God shut the door. God shut the door. And then rain began to fall. And then water came up from the earth underneath. Water was coming from top and bottom. 
the hills were covered, the valleys were filled. And why? People did not believe until they saw the rain. People did not believe until they saw the flood. And they were all trying to get into the ark. My Lord. But you know what Jesus says? Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the coming of the Son of Man. So shall it be. Amen. Whereby it says, whereby the world was then in overflow and perish. He's coming back again. He is coming back again. It went on to say, but beloved, be not ignorant. Don't be ignorant of this one thing. That a day in the Lord, with the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering. He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Noah preached repentance. Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, he preached repentance. And so many times we've seen that God had to take judgment. Hallelujah. When Jonah went to Nineveh, he was preaching repentance. All, he, all Jonah said was repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. That's all he said. He didn't preach any long gospel. Uh, no, no, long, no, no, no long preaching. All he said was repent for the kingdom of God. God shall destroy Nineveh. And the king called a fast. Not even the animals were fed. What are we saying? That Jesus says that the children of Nineveh shall rise up and judge this generation. The children of Nineveh shall rise up and judge this generation because they heard about repentance and they did repent in sackcloth and ashes. But this generation will not repent. They will not repent. But God's word will, will remain. The day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. A thief. If, a, if, you know, if you're in a house and you know a thief is coming tonight, you won't be sleeping. You'll be sitting up. Because you know a thief is coming and you're not going to allow a thief to come inside your house. Because a thief only come to kill, steal and destroy like the devil. The devil is a thief. Satan is a thief. Lucifer is a thief. But he said he's not a thief but he's coming just like a thief. Because you don't know when a thief is coming. And so the coming of the Lord is like a thief in the night. And Peter says, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The element shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that, we, that all these things must be, be dissolved, what manner of person ought we to be in holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the Lord our God wherein the heaven being on fire shall dissolve and the element shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth where dwelleth righteousness wherefore my beloved seeing that we look for such thing let's be diligent that we found, that we be found of him in peace, having spot, have without spot and blameless. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I love the Lord. The Lord has laid down everything for us, brethren. The Lord has made a map. 
He has given us a sat enough to go to heaven. We have no excuse. We just have to serve the Lord with all our heart. There's two commandments that Jesus says. One is to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. And the other one is to love thy enemy, love thy neighbors as thyself. Two commandments. He said, upon these two commandments hangs all the laws and the prophet. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord, brethren. Continue to serve the Lord. It is going to be to further, further along. We'll know all about it. We will tell a story saved by grace. And I shall see him face to face and tell the story saved by grace and I shall see him face to face and tell the story saved by grace and I shall see him face to face and tell the story safe by grace and I shall see him face to face and tell the story safe by grace Amen, Amen. Brother Clinton can you close us in prayer, please? God bless you all. God bless every one of you. I close us in prayer, my brother. God bless you. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of your teleconference, we ask you, dear Father, to guide and protect us to the rest of the night, O oh God. I'm asking you to listen to each one of us lives, O oh God, and made us soul. We hear the words, O oh God, and I do hope and pray that each and every one will accept that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Lord, there is so many things out there that we don't even understand. And I'm asking you to touch your children right now. Lord, for this virus that is going around and taking some of your people, O oh God, I put everything before you, and I'm asking you, dear Lord, to find that um, antidote, dear Lord, that this virus may be going away. Lord, touch your children again right now. Bless each and every one, O oh God. You know our needs, O oh Father, before we even think about it. I ask you to be a part of the God and protect us. Bless the creature tonight, O oh God, and his family. Bless each and every one who are listening to this um, conference, oh God. And I pray and hope that we will live to see another day that we can listen to it again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, brethren. We, we now come to the end of our teleconference. The God richly bless you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, my brother. Bless you, my sister. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, Sister Belda. Bless you, everyone. Bless you, um, Pastor Scott, Pastor um, Walters, and all the other brethren. God bless you all. Bless you. Amen. Con let us continue to pray one for another. Amen. 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 Bless you, Pastor. Amen. Bless, Bless you. you, Brother Clinton. All right. Uh. Mm -hmm. And I shall see.